What's up guys, it's me again, Crushed Pixel. In this video I'm going to explain to you the basic usage of the Minecraft Replay mod. If you need any help installing the mod, please watch my video tutorial on how to install Forge mods. The first thing you need to do with the mod is actually recording a replay. To record a replay, all you need to do is joining a server or single player world and it is automatically going to start recording. In the upper left corner, you're going to see a recording indicator, which shows you that you are recording. You can turn this off in the replay mod settings. Once you leave the server or single player world, the replay is automatically going to save. In the main menu, you can now click on the replay viewer button to get an overview of all of the replays that you have recorded. To load a replay file, simply select it from the list and click the load button in the lower left corner. You are now in the replay file which you have just recorded. Using the movement keys, you can fly around as if you are in spectator mode. Using the mouse wheel, you can control how fast the camera flies. In the upper left corner of the screen, there is a pause button. Using the chat key, you can free your mouse and click the pause button. As you can see, you are still able to fly around in the replay, but nothing is going to move because the time is frozen. Next to the pause button there is a speed slider. Using the speed slider, you can manipulate how fast the time in your replay passes. Next to the speed slider, there's the replay timeline. On the replay timeline, there's a yellow cursor which indicates at which timestamp in the replay you currently are. You can compare the replay timeline to the timeline of a YouTube video. If the cursor is at the very left, you are at the beginning of the replay. If the cursor is at the very right, you are at the end of the replay where you stopped recording. By clicking on the replay timeline, you can jump in time. Please note that it takes a bit longer to jump backwards in time than it does to jump forwards in time. Take some time to get used to the concept of the replay timeline. You can now relive everything that you did and that happened around you during recording from any perspective you wish. The replay mod allows you to create cinematic camera paths from a replay recording. A camera path consists out of several position and time keyframes. The keyframe system in the replay mod is very similar to the keyframe system of video editing software like After Effects or Premiere Pro. So if you're familiar with video animating, you won't have too many problems using the replay mod. But let me explain everything. Below the replay timeline, there is the so-called keyframe timeline. You can place position and time keyframes on the keyframe timeline to define a camera path. Let's start with position keyframes. You can add a position keyframe to the keyframe timeline using the green ROM button. The keyframe will always be added at the position of the cursor on the keyframe timeline. A position keyframe remembers the position of the camera. If there are more than just one position keyframe on the keyframe timeline, the camera is going to move between those position keyframes during the camera path. Let's just add some position keyframes to demonstrate this. Using the H key, you can toggle the path preview. If the path preview is enabled, you can see what way the camera will move during the camera path. The distance between the position keyframes on the keyframe timeline determines how much time the camera actually takes to travel between the positions. For example, if you have one position keyframe at 0 seconds and the second position keyframe at 10 seconds, it's going to take 10 seconds for the camera to travel between those positions. The concept of time keyframes may be a bit more difficult to understand, but they are really important, so listen carefully. A time keyframe contains the cursor's position on the replay timeline. When you add a new time keyframe using the green hourglass button, it remembers the time in the replay you're currently at. So if you have multiple time keyframes, the cursor's position on the replay timeline is going to move between the values of these time keyframes.
Let me give you an example. If you have two time keyframes which hold the same value for the cursor position on the real timeline, the cursor position will not move between those keyframes. This means that between those keyframes the time in the replay is frozen. If you have a time keyframe which was set when you were at the very beginning of the replay and another time keyframe which was set when you were in the middle of the replay, the replay timeline cursor is going to move from the beginning to the middle between those keyframes. This implies that if the time keyframes are farther apart, the time is going to move slower during the camera path than if the time keyframes are very close to each other. Play around with it and create some camera paths until you feel like you fully understood it. Once you created a camera path which you like, you can render this camera path to a video. To do so, click the flash drive icon in the upper left corner of the screen. The render settings screen is going to open where you can define some settings for the video which is being rendered. I recommend not to change any of these values except for the video resolution and the video frame rate. For more information on the other settings please read the official documentation. To start rendering click the render button in the lower part of the screen. Your sequence is now going to be exported. This might take a few minutes depending on how long the sequence actually is. Once the video has finished rendering, you're going to hear a success sound, therefore you can simply let the rendering run in the background. Now that you've learned how to create awesome cinematic videos using the replay mod, there's one final aspect with the mod which you need to know about. In the main menu, there's a button which takes you to the replay center. In order to use the replay center, you need an account on replaymod.com and you can create this account using the register button in the mod itself. In the replay center, you can find replays which other users have shared on the replay mod website. If you want to upload a replay yourself, simply click the upload button while in the replay viewer. Please make sure that if you upload a replay, it has a thumbnail which you can set using the N key while a replay is loaded and it has a proper description, video title and category. For more information on the guidelines, make sure to read the rules on the website. We really appreciate if you share your best replays with others because that helps growing the community. Thanks for watching this very basic tutorial on how to use the Minecraft replay mod. Of course I did not show all of the features because the mod is very complex. For more information please refer to the official documentation on replaymod.com slash docs. As always thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a thumbs up and a subscription for more replaymod related videos. See you next time. Bye.